Simmons on all of this. Nick, um, the deed has been done. Uh, any more to say on Sahali? Well, very good to join you this morning, Eamon, first of all. But there are serious questions now for the Prime Minister because we know from Solari Magnus's report that last July, uh, Mr Zahawi made a declaration on his ministerial declarations that he was under investigation by HMRC. We also know that in September of last year, he came to a settlement with HMRC about unpaid taxes, uh, in respect of which he paid a penalty. And yet, at the end of October, the Prime Minister appointed him to a very senior position in his cabinet. That speaks to very serious questions about Rishi Sunak's judgment. And indeed, by the way, not just appointing Nadeem Zahawi, but what, how the Prime Minister polices the ministerial code, because that penalty being paid in September was not actually declared by Nadeem Zahawi until this month in January. So we have a Prime Minister who has promised accountability, integrity, professionalism, but actually is just extraordinarily weak and has had to be dragged kicking I'll and cut screaming. Him any slack. To make this I mean, decision. he's only 100 days in the job. Well, he, he may be only 100 days in the job, but he said on the steps of Downing Street how important ethics, integrity, probity and accountability were to him. This was a litmus test for the Prime Minister. Two weeks ago, when we started having this debate and at Prime Minister's questions, the Prime Minister said all questions had been answered. It wasn't the case. And there's a very simple principle at stake here. It's that people who collect our taxes shouldn't be avoiding taxes themselves. The Prime Minister should already have acted. So can you guarantee then to our listeners and viewers that there won't be any Labour MPs that are exposed for similar wrongdoings? Because Dan Needle, who uh, did a lot of the investigation work into Nadeem Zahawi, said he's working on another case at the moment and he could confirm it is not a Conservative member of Parliament. You're not all squeaky clean? Look, I can't look into people's souls, obviously, or personal finances. What I can say is that Keir Starmer would take a very different uh, approach in terms of these things. Keir Starmer expects the highest of standards, and I've no doubt Keir Starmer would act decisively in a way that Rish Rishi Sunak simply has not over this. And even now, as we speak this morning, Rishi Sunak has still not come out and answered the questions fully and transparently about what he knew and why he appointed Nadeem Zahawi to his cabinet in October. OK, I want to ask you about the strikes. Uh, lots of families, uh, grandparents, parents, children indeed, uh, very worried about schools closing on Wednesday. Uh, Labour today, though, making a fresh attempt to block the anti-strike laws that the government is trying to bring in. Um, it would keep the schools open, wouldn't it? No, the the anti-strike bill going through Parliament is going to make the situation worse. I mean, the government's own uh, risk uh, assessment, its own impact assessment uh, on this bill raises that risk. It is a classic example of where the government's behaviour is just aggravating the situation. With the industrial disputes there have been, the government has either sat on the sidelines, pretended it's nothing to do with them, or they have made the situation worse. Instead of doing the hard grind, the difficult work of sitting down and finding compromise positions. Uh, this is a government that, quite frankly, is out of ideas and is ceasing to govern in the way that it should be. Nick, you made me laugh, though. You made me smile there when you talk about administration sitting on the sidelines pretending it's nothing to do with them. So, you know, well, we turn that on Labour. Um, has it anything to do with you? Do you support strikes or the right to strike or not? We support the right to strike. We have been urging the government to find a compromise before coming into politics. Eamon, I was a, a barrister. I represented many people in negotiations. I was also a mediator, so I was able to see disputes, if you like, from a more neutral perspective. 
And what I always found in those situations, and I was in many of them, is nobody came out of the room with everything that they wanted, but people did come out of the room with a position that both sides could live with. But to get there, it took hard work, it took graft, it took commitment to finding a compromise, which has been sadly lacking on the part of this government. And by the way, you're asking me about Labour and taking responsibility. Uh, my, in my role as Shadow Secretary of State for International Trade, tonight I am putting together here in Westminster over 200 diplomats, uh, sorry, over 100 diplomats and over 200 businesses showing, convening together people who can build the networks to actually open up new trade markets around the world. That is action. That is what a Labour government would do in office. The, the actual government is simply out of ideas and out of time. But, but I don't feel like you've answered the question on strikes on Wednesday in particular. I mean, do you personally think that schools should be striking? Do you think that schools should be closing their gates in the wake of the pandemic, where we know the impact on children and their outcomes? I, I don't want to see the strikes going ahead. I don't want to see the disruption. That's what strikes always bring. Nor do the teachers themselves want to be out on strike. It's why we've been saying week after week, month after month to the government, take responsibility, try to prevent these situations from happening. And then the government's position has been, frankly, all over the place. They've been on the one hand saying it's, it's nothing to, to do with them. They've been on the other then having the odd meeting, it seems. Then uh, again, they've been bringing this highly unnecessary, and um, by the way, ineffective uh, anti-strike bill to parliament. It's time that they actually did the hard painstaking work that is required to reach compromise in these different uh, sectors that are out on strike. OK, Nick, really appreciate your time. Nick's Thomas Simmons. Appreciate your time. Is, thank thank you. you. Is the Shadow Secretary of State for International Trade big uh, gathering he has tonight?